Praise God. Welcome out tonight. Thank God you're here. Let's lift our voices. If you're tuning in on YouTube, sing along with us. Lift your hands. Amen. Worship Jesus. Let's sing out that song, King of Kings. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
just slow it down tonight, continue in an attitude of worship. Church, open up your heart this evening. Let God have his way. Let's sing out that song, Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord.
Let's go before the Lord and pray this morning or this evening, church. Let's ask God to help us. Uh, as always, we want to lift up the leaders of our fellowship, especially Pastor Greg Mitchell, his wife Lisa, for God's touch. We also want to pray for the assistant pastors, Jesse and Bethany Morales, Steve and Emily Cassio, for God's favor. Uh, the, also the Spanish ministry, Diego Galvan, his wife Kelly. Uh, also um, our president, his cabinet, our military, for God's protection. Uh, our mother church and their pastor, Pastor Rich Cox, his wife Brenda, the Redlands congregation, Pastor Bob Torres, his wife Denise, and also the assistant Brian and Jenny St. Armand in Redlands as well. I want to pray for the evangelist Leonard Williams, his wife Patsy for continued blessing upon their ministry, all of our fellowship churches throughout the earth, especially our sister churches, Andrew and Sabrina Sines in Riverside, Scott and Keisha Reed in Paris, George and Lisa Albron in Ontario, David and Lorraine Munoz in Highland, Juan and Debbie Landine in Montclair, David and Chrissy Gatlip in Tyler, Texas, also Albert and Brianna Reese in uh, Longview, Texas, uh, praying for Renee and Molly in Calexico for continued blessing and breakthrough, our international works, Felipe and Daisy Segovia in Bogota, Colombia, also Sebastian and Viviana Lopez in Cali, Colombia, uh, Mario and Christy Mejia in Lima, Peru, um, Abel and um, uh, uh, Alba, I'm sorry, Alba and Alma, Right Abel now? and Alba. Abel and Alba. Abel and Alba. Say that five times. Really fast. <laughs> Abel and Alba. Okay. Amen. For Mejia from in Mexicali, Mexico. Also praying for the Covina congregation here that God would continue to help us. Uh, well, it says Alma on here. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Amen. So um, uh, let's continue to pray for the, some needs here. Chacon family for God's touch. Dora for healing. Mary Irvin for continued healing. The Echevedia family for God's touch. Rob Harris, Sally Harris, Kainoa, Jackson, Maria Henderson, all for healing. Uh, Maribel and family for God's favor. Jody healing from brain cancer. Molly Hernandez healing from gallbladder issues. My uh, mom continued healing. Evangeline Boatwright. Uh, uh, for strength, the Alvarez family for comfort and direction, uh, Paula Diaz for um, healing from lupus, uh, Padilla family comfort uh, uh, for their family, Rocio Sanchez for the hand of God upon his life, Lena for continued healing uh, on her body, Laura Gonzalez needs a miracle as well, she's, uh, uh, she's been transferred to a, a nursing, skilled, uh, nursing home to, for recovery, physical therapy, I believe, in different things uh, for people that have strokes. So pray for her and believe God. Perhaps you're here this evening. You have a special need you'd like to lift up before God. And you can signify that by a raised hand. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God to help us. And when we subside, Ryan will come and open us in prayer tonight. Father God, we love you this evening, God. We thank you for this time to be in your house, Lord God. We come with an expectancy, Lord God, to hear from you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your word would touch hearts tonight, God, that we would leave here changed and transformed. God, by the renewing of our minds, Lord God, I praise you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace this evening, God. Help us, Lord God. Let us leave here different in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for bringing us here tonight. Father God, we pray that you continue to help us, Father God. Continue to move in our services, Father God, I pray for these prayer requests, that you would answer them according to your will, Father God, I pray for the leaders of our fellowship, 
Continue to give them wisdom, Father God, and I pray that you would speak to us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet one another. Praise God. God, welcome tonight. Thank God you're here for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time to tune in for service this evening. Just to give you a few announcements, let you know about all that God is doing. We do have our services every Sunday morning. We have a Bible study Sunday school at 10 a.m. We also have our morning service at 11 a.m. We have our Sunday evening service at 7 p.m. Midweek service every Wednesday night at 730 and one hour, one hour before every one of those services, there is prayer. So start your service with Jesus. Come out and be a part of that. Uh, we do have outreach activity every Saturday. Uh, 9 o'clock is prayer. 10 o'clock is outreach. Uh, um, and we have outreach this Saturday. So be out at 9 if you can for prayer. 10 o'clock outreach. And then we kick off revival starting Sunday. Amen. Can't believe it's already here. It's going to happen quick. Uh, so February 7th through the 11th, we're having revival with Evangelist Ray Fallon. Uh, Sunday morning at 11, Sunday evening 7, and then Monday through Thursday each night, 7.30. Come out. Don't miss a service. It could be the one that God wants to talk to you. Amen. So be out for that. Let God help us in all of that. And I think that is all the announcements this evening. Praise God. We're going to take an offering tonight, give you a chance to invest in all that God is doing. Let's continue to be faithful with tithes, offerings, pledges that we make to world evangelism. Uh, it's rightfully God's. Don't, don't spend that. Uh, put God first, uh, and God will take care of the rest. Amen. Let's give God praise uh, as we bow our heads and our hearts really quick. Father, we thank you for this time, God, to give unto your kingdom. God, we ask your blessing, God, upon gift and giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, the offering box is to your left. Uh, feel free to drop that in. And uh, as we sing out that song, Jesus, you've done so much for me. Jesus, you've done so much for me. I cannot tell. chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, if you will turn there with us tonight, amen. You know, there's something inside every human being that is the need to be loved. Anybody need to be loved, amen? You like to be loved by people, your family, marriages, you know, it, it's filled with love. And we survey God who is love. The very essence of God's, what God did with his son Jesus Christ shows us uh, how much God loves us. And I want to preach a sermon about God's everlasting love because this is something that we can all battle, especially if you've come from a broken relationship, especially if you've grown up, uh, um, you know, with, without, you know, feeling loved in your life, uh, uh, not accepted, not wanted, or, you know, you kind of just feel like you've been left out uh, in the world. And I think every one of us has that desire in us uh, to want to belong and want to be loved. And if we're not careful, that can affect uh, the way we live in life uh, and the way we demonstrate our love to others. And I struggled with that when I got saved because... I knew what the world's love was like. You do for me, I'll do for you. You take care of me, I'll take care of you. You disrespect me, forget you, right? 
And we grow up that way. And if we're not careful, we'll live the rest of our lives that way. But thank God we can come into church. We can get saved. We can give our lives to Jesus. Uh, and the word of God begins to fill us uh, and really shows us uh, what the love of God is really about. And that really, that love is what helps us uh, to be able to love others properly. Because I don't think many times people understand what the love of God is. Uh, and we have a hard time demonstrating that in our lives. So we're going to look at that tonight because God's word shows us what God's love is all about. And we're going to be reading out of Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are all killed. Uh, we are all killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, that is a glimpse of what the love of God is all about. And we need to understand that tonight. Uh, how many of you like when somebody out of the blue just calls you up, they thought about you, they, they did something special for you, they bought you something, uh, uh, or they just did some kind deed for you without you even knowing it? And you're just like, wow, you, you did that for me? You actually, you, you just, what's it for? It's not my birthday, it's it, but it was just because they were thinking about you and they wanted to do something special for you. How many know that's what God did on the cross? With his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. We were sinning against God, right? We weren't acknowledging God, probably. We weren't doing uh, what we were supposed to be doing. And yet, uh, God demonstrated his love to us. There's no circumstance in life that can separate us from God's love. If you think about what Jesus did on that cross through God's plan, right? Uh, at when we were doing living our life, I don't know about you, I, I lived a pretty ungodly life for quite a while. And for God to do what he did, it blew my mind after I understood what it all what it was all about after I got saved. So there's no circumstance in life that can separate us from God's love. He's already paid the price. Not one person, right? Uh, Romans 8, 31 in our scripture says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And you, like I said, you may have been, you've grown up in a hard life. You grew up not knowing what real love is all about. You grew up, matter of fact, feeling unwanted and not liked. But Barnes Notes tells us who can injure or destroy us. Sinners may be against us and so may the great enemy of our souls. But their power to destroy us is taken away. God is more mighty than all our foes, and he can defend and save us. That is God working on your behalf. He is for you. Yes, the world may be rude to you. The world may despise you. People may not like you or to be around you, but can I tell you, uh, that's their problem. That's what they have to work out. Uh, that doesn't give us the right to treat them just as bad. Uh, we need to pray for them. We need to... Uh, uh, you know, possibly share the gospel with them if we can. But can I tell you, uh, the Bible says it's clear that if God is for us, uh, who can be against us? Psalms 118.6 says, the, the, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Adam Clark 
goes on to say, He who is infinitely wise has undertaken to direct us. He who is infinitely powerful has undertaken to protect us. He who is infinitely good has undertaken to save us. What cunning, strength, or malice can prevail against his wisdom, power, and goodness? None. Therefore, we who love God are safe, and not only shall sustain no essential damage by the per persecutions of ungodly men, but even these things uh, work together for our good. Matthew Henrys goes on to say, This includes all that God is for us, not only reconciled to us and so not against us, but in covenant with us and so engaged for us. All his attributes for us, his promises are for us. All that he is and has and does is for his people. He performs all things for them. He is for them, even when he seems to act against them. And if so, who can be against us so as to prevail against us, so as to hinder our happiness? Be they never so great and strong, ever so many, ever so might, ever so malicious, what can they do? While God is for us, we keep in his love. We may with a holy boldness defy all the powers of darkness. Let Satan do his worst. He is chained. Let the world do its worst. It is conquered. Principalities and powers are spoiled and disarmed and triumphed over in the cross of Christ. Who then dares fight against us while God himself is fighting for us? I don't know if you've taken time to read through your Bible stories of the enemy coming against the people of God. God called noises to be rumbling through the bushes to scare people away. God's word has called, you know, uh, God has done so many supernatural things. If you would just look, uh, uh, the armies of, 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 of the enemy are against the people of God, the Israel, uh, uh, people of Israel. Uh, they come to a Red Sea. Uh, yeah, there's no way to cross it. No, uh, Moses raises his staff, parts the Red Sea. Yeah, they cross over as the enemies are trailing through. God brings the waters back over them, drowns them. And can I tell you, if you'll read the Bible and you'll hear the stories that God performed to save his people, you'll be astonished and you'll realize that we have a, an advocate, the Father, who is working in our behalf. As long as we are serving God, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to be, there's nothing in life that we have to worry about. Not one situation. Not one trial, not one setback, no heartache, no downfall can I tell you uh, uh, in life uh, can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 33 and 35 of our scripture says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You see, church, our scripture says nothing can come against the love that Christ has for us. Think about this for a moment. The Bible says God didn't spare his own son for us, but gave him up for us. He gave him up for us. So why wouldn't God just give us the things that we have need of? Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? His only begotten son. I don't know many of us here that would give up our son or daughter uh, for somebody else. Uh, you know, I mean, God, that's what God did. He delivered him up for us. Barnes commentary goes on to say his giving his son is a proof that he will give to us all things that we need. The argument is from the greater to the less. He that has given the greater gift will not withhold the less. Remember Abraham. God said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac. Whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Here's Abraham's test. You know, Abraham, the Bible says the following morning, he saddled him up on a donkey. He went off for the journey. 
He took him up on the mountain, uh, and you know, and, and Abraham, he says, okay, sacrifice your son. You know, and he's like, he's probably thinking, you know, this is the sacrifice, my son. But Abraham did what Jesus said, did what God said. You know, and I'm like, man, you know, the, the obedience. And can I tell you, uh, he was not afraid to, to do what God says. Uh, and God was testing Abraham. In other words, he was trying to see, uh, uh, can he trust him with what all that he wanted to do in and through his life? Abraham, the Bible says, is the father of many nations. We're from the seed of Abraham. The Bible says as many as the stars in the sky. That's the seeds, the descendants of Abraham. As the many grains of sand on the seashore. Those are the descendants of Abraham. Can I tell you, we're all part of that. Everybody that exists in life is part of that promise right here. God was testing him in Genesis twenty two twelve, 12. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad. See, Abraham was going to tie him up. And he was going to put him on the, on the wood for the sacrifice. And as he's doing that, God says, don't touch him. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. What about you tonight? Are you willing to give to God things that mean a lot to you? See, some of you have been worrying and stressing out about a lot of things in life when you need to give it to God. See, we're, we hold on to it. We coddle it. We don't want to release it to God. We worry about it. We stress out about it. And all along, God says, give it to me. Let me have it. Are you willing to give to God things that mean a lot to you? Things that you hold dear in your heart. Things that are precious to you. Things that are important to you. Are you willing to give them to God? See, this may include children. You're just so stressed out about children in life, kids in life, relatives in life, whatever it may be. This could be you're worrying about a spouse, a, a husband, a wife, a, an aunt, an uncle, a family member, like I said, you know, and, and relatives. Uh, and, you're, you know, you're so stressed out. You don't know sure they're going to make it. How are they going to do? Uh, God, get a hold of them. And can I tell you, sometimes you, it's time to just say, you know what, God, they're yours now. I can't change this. I'm stressing out. I'm losing sleep. Uh, you know, I can't function. And, you know, and many people live that way. If you can release it to God, can I tell you, God will take away the burden. God will take away the stress. God will take away the anxiety, the fear, the confusion. If you'll just release it to God. Genesis 22, 15 through 18. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham, 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 Abraham a second time out of heaven and said by myself I have sworn says the Lord because you've done this thing and have not withheld your son your only son blessing I will bless you and in multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Think about that. That promise. God was going to make a great nation out of Abraham. But you know what? Before many times, uh, uh, God is going to prove you in that. He's going to try you. Or can you handle this? Are you going to be okay with this? And Abraham passed the test. Matthew Henry says, observe what God has done for us. On which our hopes are built. He spared not his own son when he was to undertake our salvation. The father was willing to part with him, did not think him too precious a gift to, to bestow for the salvation of poor souls. Now we may, we may know that he loves us and that he hath not withheld his son, his own son, his only son from us. Now, that being said, church, knowing that God is for us, how many know now we are more than conquerors? The Bible is clear. With Christ, the strength of Christ, with Jesus moving in our lives, we are more than conquerors. Not through ourselves, not through my own strength, not through your own strength. It is only by the power and the strength of Christ. We have this misconception that we can conquer on our own. 
Left to myself, can I tell you, church, I was miserable. I was unhappy. Outside of Christ, we can do nothing. I don't know about you, but when I was left to myself, I went through tribulation. That word tribulation literally means, uh, uh, refers to pressure from without. Affliction arising from external causes. It means, however, not infrequently, a trial of any kind. When I was by myself, I was stressed uh, and, and, and went through distress. Uh, and that word means properly narrowness of place. Have you ever been constricted? I remember, you know, wrestling around with people that were bigger with bigger than me when I was when I was younger. And when they would get a hold of me and I couldn't escape, it freaked me out. It's like, you know, you start panicking. Like I can't go. I can't move. I, I you know, you're you're you just start feeling claustrophobic and you start feeling uh, uh, like you, you're just overwhelmed and you need to get out. You need to get out. And that's what it's talking about, like a narrowness of place. Great anxiety, distress of the mind, such as arises when a man does not know where to turn himself or what to do for relief. It refers, therefore, to distress of anxi or anxiety of mind, such as the early Christians were often subject to from, to from their trials and persecutions. See, when we're on our own and we're trying to conquer everything on our own church, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine peril, the, you know, danger, uh, the sword, all of these things pressure us. The word famine is to this, they were also exposed as the natural result of being driven from their home and of being often compelled to wander amid strangers and in deserts and desolate places. We need to remember that we're conquerors through Christ Jesus. We're covered by the blood. Romans 8, 37 of our scripture says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Barnum's commentary goes on to say, Not by their own strength or power. It was by the might of the Savior and by his power pledged to them and confirmed by the love invinced when he gave himself for them. Christ gave himself for you. He gave himself willingly for you. That's why we willingly need to receive him. That's why we're not robots. God doesn't force us to serve him. He is looking for a soul that willingly will lay down their pride, humble themselves, uh, and invite Jesus to come into their lives. And when that happens, uh, we're more than conquerors. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengthens me. Barnes goes on to say, we gain the victory. That is, they have not power to subdue us, to alienate our love and confidence, to produce apostasy. We are the victors, not they. Our faith is not destroyed. Our love is not diminished. Our hope is not blasted, but it is not simple victory. It is not mere life and continuance of what we had before. It is more than simple triumph. It augments our faith, increases our strength, expands our love to Christ. Since being saved, since being saved, do you find yourself more compassionate? Do you find yourself more loving? I know I do. If it wasn't for Christ, uh, I wouldn't know how to take care of my wife and love my wife. If it wasn't for Christ, uh, I wouldn't know how to love my children, my grandchildren. It is the love of God that has compelled me and, and he's given me and softened my heart, especially as men, because we can be a little rough, a little rugged, have a hard time showing our emotions. And now, you know, uh, my wife says, man, you're crying? You know, I, I, why are you crying? I, I don't know. This guy's testimony, this girl's testimony. I, I, it's, just, it's just something that just comes over my heart where it's like, yeah. And it's actually shed a tear. It's like before, no, it wouldn't affect me. But now I'm like, you're crying. Why are you crying? Honey, did you hear the testimony? Yeah, I heard it. Wasn't that sad? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. It's just how God has done something to my heart. More compassionate. More forgiving. Right? More patient. 
God increases our strength, expands our love. That's what God does. Matthew Henry says, we are more than conquerors in our patiently bearing these trials. We are not only conquerors, but more than conquerors. That is triumphers. Listen to what we can go through when Jesus is on our side. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, right, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's have a little, a few illustrations of what these are talking about. That's the God we serve, uh, where he says neither death nor life. In other words, he's talking about te terrors of death on one hand. Uh, you ever have dreams that something's going to happen to you or somebody's, something happened to somebody and you're, you wake up in a panic like you're scared, you're terror, you're, you feel like that? Well, God, that's what God's talking about. He says neither the, neither the terrors of death on one hand nor the comforts and pleasures of life on the other. Neither the fear of death nor the hope of life, or we shall not be separated from that love, uh, from that love either in death or in life. And then he says, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Those are both the good angels and the bad angels, right? Uh, are, are, they're called principalities and powers. Uh, and he says, neither shall be able to uh, uh, separate you. The good angels will not, the bad angels shall not, uh, and neither can. The good angels are engaged friends. The bad are restrained enemies. Nor things present nor things to come. It's talking about neither the sense of troubles that are present, nor the fear of trouble, tr uh, troubles that are down the road to come. Time shall not separate us. Eternity shall not. Uh, things present separate us from things to come. Uh, and things to come separate or cut us off from things present but neither from the love of Christ uh, whose favor is twisted in with both present things and the things to come. In other words, God is controlling the now and what's going to happen down the road. We're in the love and grace of God, his strength. Uh, we are more than conquerors through him. Now and then tomorrow and, the, and down the road, uh, we're protected. Nor height nor depth. It's talking about the height of prosperity right, or preferment, nor the depth of adversity or disgrace, nothing from heaven above, no storms, no tempests, nothing on earth below, no rocks, no seas, no dungeons can separate you from the love of Christ, nor any other creature, anything that can be named or thought of, it will not, it cannot separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It cannot cut off, cut off or impair our love to God or God's love to us. That's what God's love's all about. This is the everlasting love of God. He loves us so much, church. Let his love comfort you when you're going through things. Let his love be the love that you need when you feel that you have no love. He'll never forsake you. He'll never walk out on you. Right? He'll never wish your harm on you or anything. God loves us so much that he was willing to give his son in your place. I don't know about you, church, but that comforts me. Knowing that I am loved by God, that he cares for me. And his word tells me that nothing can be against me. I rest in that. I seek shelter in that, comfort in that. I sleep good at night because of that. I don't fear what's going to happen. I don't fear what's going to what's down the road because I know my God is going to take care of me. As long as I'm living for God, as long as I'm doing my part, I know my God is going to be there for me. Now that's the comfort that you need to have tonight. That's what you need to walk in this evening. Don't stress out about life that you can't control. That you can't control. You can only, you, we have a hard time just dealing with ourselves, let alone worrying about anybody else. It's time that we focus on God and let the love of God direct us and guide us and protect us. Let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord tonight. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. In reference to God, perhaps you're here this evening, you're not saved, you're not born again. 
Maybe tonight you don't have a relationship with God. You're in sin. Your life's a mess. And you need the grace of God. You need the help of God. Can I tell you it's time? We have to humble ourselves. We have to admit that we need help. That we can't do it on our own. It's okay. You don't have to be Superman all the time. You don't have to be Wonder Woman all the time. It's You can be in Christ and let him move for you. Let him help you. The Bible says in our weakness, then we can be strong because that's where God's strength is the best when we are weak. Unsaved, backslidden. Do not have your sins forgiven. You know that's what you need tonight. Can I tell you the Bible says Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood to give us hope. Tonight you have that hope. It's here. It's waiting for you. What are you going to do with it tonight? Are you willing to accept it? Are you willing to humble yourself and repent and ask Jesus to come into your life? If that is you, quickly lift up your hand. You're tuning in on YouTube. You've tuned in with us tonight. You've heard the sermon. And maybe you've struggled with love and feeling love and, and accepted in God's kingdom. Can I tell you, he loves you. He cares for you. He was willing to give up his only begotten son, Jesus, for you. For you and for me. But can I tell you, that's what you need tonight. Some of us, we want to feel accepted. We want to feel that we're welcome. Can I tell you, God is waiting for you with open arms. All you got to do is humble yourself, put down your pride, and repent of your sins. That's the key. God cannot help you until you're willing to do that. If that's you tonight, lift up your hand and say, you know what? I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of stressing out. I'm tired of being overwhelmed. Pray for me. I need help tonight. And if God is dealing with you, lift up your hand. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. God cares for you. loves you. He was not embarrassed for you. Would you lift your hand for him right now? Lift it up where we can see it. You're tuning in. God's talking to you right now. And you need God. I want you to lift your hand all across this place. I see this hand. How many more will join this honest heart? You need God. You need his mercy and his grace. Anybody else? Quickly lift it up. Praise God. Would you do one thing? Would you take a step forward? Would you come up front? Well, I'm going to pray with you right now. If you're tuning in on YouTube and you've lifted your hand, I'm going to pray with you as well. Go ahead and bow right here. I want you to say these words. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Online too. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. I know that I am a sinner. Right now, I turn from my sin. And I ask you to forgive me. From this day forward, I give you my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I thank you. And I believe on the third day, you rose from the dead and ascended into heaven to give me hope and to give me life. And I give you glory and I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If God spoke to you tonight, perhaps maybe you don't feel loved. You don't feel accepted. Can I tell you, that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is condemnation. That is the devil that is bringing those thoughts. That is not God. God cares for you. God loves you so much that he went to the cross for you. These altars are open tonight. You come out of your seat. Find a place to pray. The rest of us, let's stand. Let's worship God as we sing out that song, Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord.
love you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we need your blessing, God. We need your love and compassion this evening, Lord God. Help us, God, to seek you, Lord God. Help us to find your grace, Lord God. We need you, God. We need the strength and the grace of God in our lives. God, help us, God. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice on the cross, God, to give us that strength in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, church, but God is totally given me the, the love and the acceptance that, that we all need. We're all looking for that. We want to feel wanted. We want to feel loved. We want to feel that we're a part of something. And that's what God gives us. He welcomes us as the children of God, amen, as, as the friends of God. That's what we have. We're, we're accepted in the beloved church. Can I tell you, that's, that means something to us. And can I tell you, that has changed my, my thought process. That has changed the way I treat people, the way I look at people. I don't look anymore like, Ugh. you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, too many times we're always seeing, oh man, we're looking at the problems and not the potential in people's lives. Everybody has a story. Everybody has what they, how they grew up, what they've been through. And, and if we only put ourselves in their shoes, we would realize that, that people are just looking for acceptance. They're tired of being pushed away. They're tired of being abused and, and, and you know, and, and looked down on and, and like they're nothing. God, God accepted us the way we were. I don't know about you. I was a mess. I don't know who could have wanted me at that time. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't want me. My own parents, you know, were, you know, they they hide from me when I came. Oh, there he is. Lock the doors. Close the blinds. But can I tell you, God opened the door and let me come into church, and it didn't. And lightning didn't strike either when I came in. So. God loves us, church, cares for us, has a plan for us. Let's be involved in that. Uh, let's come. Some things we just got to give to God. Let him have it. We can't stress it. We can't change it. We got to give it to God. Amen. Appreciate you all coming tonight. Believe in God for great things. Uh, uh, don't forget Sundays are revival starting. Be out for that. Be involved. Uh, you know, we're excited for Jesus. There's still flyers on the bulletin. Take some. Invite your, your neighbors, co-workers, enemies. Uh, uh, and hopefully they'll become your friends. Amen. And let's believe God for great things. Let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord tonight. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Uh, Mark, would you ask God's blessing as we dismiss? Father God, thank you for your word tonight, Father God. Father God, I thank you for loving the word. Father God, I ask you just to remind us, Father God, when uh, we're trying to do it on our own, just uh, keep it to you. Let you handle it. Thank you, Father God. Protect us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys next time.